And here is the Writer's Almanac for Sunday. It's the 5th of May, 2019. May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, commemorating the Mexican victory over the French in the Battle of Puebla, 1862. 8,000 well-armed French troops were routed by 4,000 ill-equipped Mexican soldiers. Not a crucial battle, but a symbol of Mexican pride, a celebration of Mexican culture in this country, and adopted by many Americans regardless of their heritage, as St. Patrick's Day has been, or Oktoberfest, and heavily promoted by beer companies. It's the birthday of the man who said, I believe that if ever I had to practice cannibalism, I might manage if there were enough tarragon around. That was James Beard, born in Portland, Oregon, 1903, called the father of American cooking, or as Julia Child once said, in the beginning, there was Beard. He grew up loving food. His father worked in the customs house in Portland. His mother ran a small hotel. She loved to cook. They employed a Chinese cook in the house, so young James ate a lot of Chinese food growing up. The family spent summers on the coast where they caught fish and they collected berries. And James Beard always remembered when he was two years old, he was taken to a World's Fair. And the thing that he remembered for the rest of his life was watching Triscuits and shredded wheat biscuits being made. Though he loved food, he didn't consider it as a career. When he was young, he wanted to go into music or theater. He went to Reed College. He was kicked out for having an affair with one of his male professors. Studied voice in London and Paris. Went to Hollywood, New York, trying to find jobs. But to pay the rent, he would sometimes teach cooking classes. Went back to New York to try to make it in the theater in 1938, and he met a brother and sister from Germany who loved food too, William and Irma Road. They formed a catering service called hors d'oeuvre incorporated that would serve good food for cocktail parties. James Beard met people through that. One day they catered an event for the International Food and Wine Society, whose secretary liked James Beard a lot. She got him a book deal with her publisher, and in 1940 he came out with hors d'oeuvre and canapes. After the war, he launched the world's first cooking show on television. It was called I Love to Eat. He was a frequent contributor to magazines, including gourmet, though he said himself, I don't like gourmet cooking. I like good cooking. He believed in using local ingredients and cooking from scratch, but he was not a food snob. One of his cookbooks has recipes for sloppy joes, hamburgers, cheddar cheese balls, and frankfurters in sour cream. He once said that if he were about to be executed and given a choice of his last meal, it would be bacon and eggs. He was a large man, six foot four inches tall, though he writes in his books about the nuclear American family gathered around the table. He was gay, which he did not publicly discuss even in his memoir. James Beard, who said his philosophy was, feel free and take a fresh look. My emphasis is on options. My motto, why not? It's the birthday of the crusading journalist Nellie Bly, born Elizabeth Jane Cochran in Armstrong County, Pennsylvania, 1864. Nellie Bly was her pen name. She wrote exposés of working conditions in factories and sweatshops, sometimes working there undercover. She wrote in Pittsburgh and then at Joseph Pulitzer's New York World, where she posed as a mentally ill person. She convinced doctors that she was mentally ill and so was committed to the notorious Blackwell's Island Women's Lunatic Asylum and lived there for 10 days and wrote all about it. Here's a poem for today by Robert Herrick, his famous poem, To Daffodils. Fair daffodils, we weep to see you haste away so soon, as yet the early rising sun has not attained his noon. Stay, stay until the hasting day has run, but to the even song, and having prayed together, we will go with you along. We have short time to stay as you, we have as short a spring, as quick a growth to meet decay as you or anything. 
We die as your hours do and dry away like to the summer's rain or as the pearls of morning's dew ne'er to be found again. To Daffodils by Robert Herrick. And that's the Writer's Almanac for Sunday, May the 5th. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch. 